February 2013, the first North, North Korean on the test stage, Kyung Seo Lee delivered a speech as an activist for fellow refugees. When I was young, I thought my country was best on the planet. And I grew up singing a song called Nothing to Envy, and I was very proud. In school, we spent a lot of time learning about the history of Kim Il-sung. But we never learned much about the outside world, except that America, South Korea, and Japan are the enemies. <laughs> Although I often wondered about the outside world, I thought I would spend my entire life in North Korea until everything suddenly changed. When I was seven years old, I saw my first public execution. But I thought my life in North Korea was normal. My family was not poor, and myself, I had never experienced hunger. But one day, in 1995, my mom brought home a letter from a co-worker's sister. It read, when you read this, all five family members will not exist in this world because we haven't eaten for the past two weeks. We are lying on the language of abilities and asked me tons of questions. I was so scared. I thought my heart was going to explode. If, if anything, seemed un anything seemed unnatural, I could be imprisoned and repatriated. I thought my life was over. But I managed to control all the emotions inside me and answer the questions. After they finished questioning me, one official said to another, this was a false report. She's not North Korean. And they let me go. It was a miracle. Even though I was really fortunate to get out, not many North Koreans have been so lucky. It's tragic that North Koreans have to try so hard just to hide their identities and struggles. And even after learning a new language and getting a job, their life can be turned upside down in an instant. That is why, after 10 years of hiding my identity, I decided to risk going to South Korea and I started a new life yet again. Settling down in South Korea was a lot more challenging than I, ex I had expected. English was so important in South Korea, so I had to start learning my third language. Also, I realized that there was a wide gap between North Korea and South Korea. We are all Koreans, but inside, we have become very different due to 67 years of division. I even went through identity crisis. Am I South Korean or North Korean? Where am I from? Who am I? Suddenly, there was no country I could probably call my own. Just as I was starting to get used to my new life, I received a shocking phone call. The North Korean authorities intercepted some money I sent to my family, and as a punishment, my family was going to be forcibly removed to a desolate location in the countryside. They had to get out quickly, so I started planning how to help them escape. North Koreans have to travel incredible distances on the path to freedom. It's almost impossible to cross the border between North Korea and South Korea. So ironically, I took a flight back to China. Since my family couldn't speak Chinese, I had to guide them somehow through more than 2,000 miles in China and into Southeast Asia. Our journey by bus took one week, and we were caught several times. One time, our bus was boarded by a Chinese police officer. He took everyone's ID cards and started asking them questions. And since my family couldn't understand Chinese, 
I thought my family was going to be arrested. As the Chinese officer approached my family, I just impossibly stood up and told him that these were deaf and dumb people I was chaperoning. <laughs> Luckily, he believed me. We made it all the way to the border of Laos, but I had to spend almost all my money to bribe the border guards in Laos. And even after we got past the border, my family was arrested and jailed for illegal border crossing. This was one of the lowest points in my life. I did everything to get my family out. And we came so close. But my family was thrown in a jail just a short distance from South Korean embassy. I went back and forth from immigration office to police station, desperately trying to get my family out. But I had I didn't have enough money for pay money to pay for a fine or bribe anymore. I lost all hope. At that moment, I heard one man's voice ask me, what's wrong? I was so shocked that a total stranger cared enough to ask. In my broken English and with a dictionary, I explained the situation. And without hesitating, the man went to the ATM and paid the rest of the money for my family and two other North Koreans to get out of jail. I thanked him with all my heart and asked him, why are you helping me? I'm not helping you, he said. I'm helping the North Korean people. I realized that this was a symbolic moment in my life. That kind stranger symbolized a new hope for North Korean people and my family when we need it the most. The international support is truly the ray of hope we North Koreans need. I've been so lucky, received so much help and inspirations in my life. So I want to help give aspiring North Koreans a chance to prosper with international support. I'm sure that you'll see more and more North Koreans succeeding all over the world. Thank you.